I'm always cool, calm, and laid back in my videos, but this one comes with a warning. You better buckle up, because this one is a little bit spicy. And that's only because I'm a Matrix fan. If I wasn't, I wouldn't care about this movie. The Matrix Resurrections. Or as I like to call it, The Matra Walmart Resurrections. As an action movie, it's fine, I guess. As a Matrix movie, it's garbage. It's shit. If you're a new Matrix fan and only saw this one, well, first of all, seeing this most likely didn't make you a fan of anything. And second of all, you're missing out. Even a supplementing project like the Animatrix is 100 times better than this piece of shit. And to all the original Matrix fans, we got slapped in the face. We got spit in the face. Simple as that. This movie is the worst thing to happen to the Matrix franchise, and that includes that god-awful Enter the Matrix game. I got a bunch of reasons why this is a shit movie, but this shit movie doesn't deserve any more of my time to sort these beefs into any order of importance, so let's get this started and over with. Woke bullshit. Let's get the woke bullshit out of the way. Before we get into it, I have to say I don't hate anyone as long as they're a good person. Be who you want to be. But don't pretend like all this shit masquerading as representation isn't being pushed onto all of us. It's purposely being used to cause more conflict, to turn this entire world backwards, and all these companies are basically being blackmailed to do it for a paycheck. You, you now make a point of, that's, a, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? We're doing the same thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. And ultimately, it's still going to take time, but I am just as much shocked as Ken is that we have not seen more opportunities. And we're going to have to force change. You blew it. Trust me. They're not doing it to help anyone. This movie is not for Matrix fans. It's for weak, woke weirdos. Weak, just like they made Neo. But what else would I expect? It was directed by a man who thinks he's a woman, and Big Daddy Blackrock has every company on the planet by the balls. You blew it. You like blue hair? We got ya. You like California -nya mental illness haircuts? No. We got ya. You like talk about mental illness, therapy, and people being triggered? You seem particularly triggered right now. His violence triggered you, and your mind fought back. We got ya. Do you like subtle hints at the ploy to destroy the nuclear family? We got ya. Do you like... Paint the sky with rainbows. I don't like the paint the sky with rainbows idea. Shut up. <laughs> we got ya! Man, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss took a chance trusting this person to jump off of a building for. Making fun and belittling of Neo. I guess you could chalk it up to the Matrix trying to keep him down. But people in the know of the movie industry know exactly why this was done. And that's a whole other shit topic on its own. The Matrix doesn't want Neo dead, so are they telling us all the sarcastic quips and jokes at his expense were meant to chip away at his mental health? Fucking lame! I came to another realization about this character as well. Neo was miserable, alcoholic, suicidal. I figured out who this character is. This isn't Neo from The Matrix. This is Bob Arctor from A Scanner Darkly except he's regularly being made fun of. 
Neo's fake friend that Bugs warns him about, telling him he's part of the system and not there to help him, as if he was some kind of huge threat. Bugs says, Hey, walk through this door. And Neo says, Okay. And Neo's fake friend, this supposed big threat, is never heard from again. The only threat this prick posed to Neo was maybe annoying him to death. Bad move on WB's part, wanting a sequel, whether or not the original creators were involved. Money! It could have been worse. WB could have gone ahead without any of the original creators. Having a Wachowski name attached to it gives it a tiny shred of credibility. In the film, they make fun of the fact that the parent company to The Matrix is going ahead with a sequel to their game, with or without the help of the original creators. O-M-G. The same situation Warner Brothers created that led to this abomination of a movie. Money! They even name-dropped the studio itself. I'm sure you can understand why our beloved parent company, Warner Brothers, has decided to make a sequel to the trilogy. Kind of reminds me of Bugs Bunny talking about his contract in the middle of a cartoon, or that time Daffy Duck was pitching a film idea to one of the big-time producers. And one of the main characters is even named Bugs. As in, Bunny. And wears a shirt with a carrot on it. What's up, Doc? 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 WB shoutouts, just like in the cartoons. Well, har d har har. I mean, O M G. This movie is fucking foolish. Money. By the way, this shit movie failed to break even and make back its budget. So screw you, Mr. Krabs. Screw you. I mentioned in my review that it was cool seeing Neo and Trinity meet again. Then I realized... You trying to ball my mom or what? Brandon. <laughs> nope. No? The fans can't even have that moment. And look at this prick. Might as well be laughing in the fans' faces. Yeah, laugh it up. Real funny, asshole. The cover of Rage Against the Machines Wake Up by Brass Against... I think it sounds terrible. They're a brass instrument music collective that does covers of rock songs. I have to turn that off as soon as the credits start rolling. The 9-11 references that unfortunately go back to the first film. I'm not going to go into all that bullshit here, but I mentioned them in my original review. Trinity disciplining the analyst for using children? That was for using children. What the hell? Are they really gonna go there? Am I supposed to take this seriously? Holy shit. The hypocrisy is off the charts. Fuck you, Hollywood. I don't particularly like such a fluid motion due to the special cameras they used, causing the soap opera-like effect. I'm used to the cinematic 24 frames, this movie doesn't look too bad in motion, but I wanted to up the shit count on my list for this piece of shit. The Sentinels have become a dumbed-down version of their former selves. Before, it was a choice of hiding in the darkness, or being swarmed with their ship ripped apart, or disabling their ship altogether with an EMP. Menacing, intimidating, disgusting, bug-looking things. Now... They have video game enemy cone vision. Just wait for them to turn around and sneak on by. No problem. There's only two people, one program, and two exiled machines tampering with the one and only pod the Matrix needs to stay operational. In this scene, Bugs has blood coming out her nose and out her ears and she tells Neo she tells Neo he looks like shit <laughs> am I supposed to be laughing at Neo here well that one backfired spoiler alert but who cares? You shouldn't be watching this shit anyways. 
Captain Niobe makes a return. She's overseer of one of the new thriving cities since Neo established peace for the entire world. Are you going to find a way to help your old friend who saved your life and the entire world? No, of course not. Lock him up. As long as you've got what you want. Something you never would have had in the first place if it wasn't for him. The unsubstantial feeling of everything. The overwhelming threat of the agents was built up perfectly in the first film, being highlighted even further that everyone in the Matrix surrounding them was part of that threat. The Matrix now replaces the agents with a swarm, turning a bunch of people into attack zombies, which feels more like a set piece rather than a dangerous situation. It's an incredibly impressive feat making hundreds of swarming enemies feel less threatening than one agent. They destroyed an $8,000 Red Komodo 6K digital camera during shooting. That's $8,000 just for the body of the camera. It wasn't worth losing one of those cameras to make this piece of shit. The world is at peace. Humans and the machines are able to coexist. This crew wants to seek Neo out because he's a legend and he's popular. Again, an unsubstantial feeling. Oh my gosh, it's Neo. Look how starstruck they are. The whole film reeks of this crew just causing shit just because they've got nothing to do. God, what a piece of shit. And finally... Do you want to know the worst, and I mean the single absolute worst thing, about The Matrix Resurrections? I had to watch it again to make this video.